Hello guys, uh, welcome all of you to today's farmcast. Today also we'll discuss five drugs of choice, one monoclonal antibody, and few questions asked by the students. So let us straight away begin with the first disorder for today. Guys, it is uh, as you know we are cruising through the alphabet N, and yesterday we ended with narco analysis, right? So that is the drug of choice for narco analysis. I told you is thiopental sodium. Why I am discussing what I discussed yesterday so that you do not get confused with the first disorder for today, and that is narcolepsy, right? So many students they get confused between narco analysis and narcolepsy. So narcolepsy, guys, the drug of choice is modafinil. So in narcolepsy, we use drugs which are stimulants, and for narcolepsy, current drug of choice is modafinil. There are older drugs like amphetamine and methylphenidate. they can also be used but they are less pre less preferred because of high risk of dependence and there is one recent drug approved for narcolepsy that you must remember and the drug is called as solriamfetol s o l r i a m f e t o l solriamfetol and it's a novel class of drug uh, called as dnri dopamine nor epinephrine reuptake inhibitor right so you might have heard about ssri snri right so this is dnri solriamfetol that is important for your inicet exam they can ask you right uh, moving on to next disorder guys reversal of ndmr so if a patient is on a non depolarizing muscle relaxant to reverse it which is the drug of choice it has been asked a lot of time and uh, your answer is neostigmin so neostigmin is the drug of choice for ndmr reversal but many a time students they ask me Uh, so why don't we use neostigmin for reversal of a depolarizing muscle relaxant that is succinylcholine guys because neostigmin will not reverse the effect of succinylcholine rather it will worsen it the reason being succinylcholine depolarizes the neuromuscular junction by acting upon the acetylcholine receptor and neostigmin will increase acetylcholine and that would further depolarize and inactivate the sodium channels so neostigmin will worsen the effect of succinylcholine right it will not reverse the effect of succinylcholine Right, moving on to the next disorder for today, guys. Nephrotic syndrome um, is a topic that has been asked quite frequently, guys. All of you know the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome is MCD, minimal change disease, and that for MCD, nephrotic syndrome, the drug of choice are steroids. In case uh, the patient is not responsive to steroid, that is steroid resistant nephrotic syndrome, the drug of choice is cyclosporine, where it is not responsive at all. and it is because of fsgs right but if it is a case of steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome where the patient relapses frequently even being on steroid that is he is, is responsive to steroid but he relapses when steroids are discontinued for such a case the preferred drug is cyclophosphamide right moving on to the next disorder guys neuroblastoma see for neuroblastoma we use a combination of four drugs and you can remember the regimen as cde C for cyclophosphamide and cisplatin, D for doxorubicin, E for etoposide. So this CDE regimen is what is preferred for treatment of neuroblastoma. Right now, coming to the monoclonal antibody for today, it's a very important antibody considering today's situation. And you might have guessed that I'm talking about an interleukin six inhibitor called as tocilizumab. Right. So does it ring a bell? How is it related to COVID? So, guys, in COVID patients uh, where there is cytokine storm and uh, when the immune system hyperreacts, patients they have a high level of interleukin six. So, such patients um, they do not improve, right? And they improve only if you give them an interleukin six blocker like tocilizumab. So, it is a drug that is used in COVID nineteen patients. So, that is one thing they can ask you. And um, Other FDA approval approved, approved uses of tocilizumab, guys. The most important use is rheumatoid arthritis. It is also approved for juvenile idiopathic arthritis and third, giant cell arthritis. Right. So these are three important uses of tocilizumab. Now remember, whenever you use any drug that down regulates your immune system, be it tocilizumab, be it TNF alpha inhibitors, or be it JAK inhibitors like tofacitinib. right or interleukin 1 inhibitor like anakinra so any kind of drug or cyclosporine or tacrolimus which are immunosuppressants so whenever i use a drug which inhibits immune system there is always a risk of infection that's pretty simple right but the second part is 
see what happens is our immune system is also responsible for uh, you know cell mediated death of the tumor cells and mostly these are the cells of melanoma so what happens is when immunosuppressants are given there is a high risk of melanoma in these patients and for that reason uh, usually we never combine these biological agents with one another like tnf alpha inhibitor like infliximab should never be combined with tocilizumab and so on because there would be severe immunosuppression that's one thing second there would be high risk of neoplasms like melanoma all right guys so that's all from the section of drugs in today's farmcast now let me go to your doubts that you have asked me in the youtube section all right so let's have a look at the first doubt it has been asked by chirag sengar and he's asking that he has completed many subjects and uh, now he's not able to recall what we what is uh, started with right basically and he has some subjects remaining so what, what should we do now should we uh, first complete the other subjects then revise or should we begin begin revision see guys i i guess you are targeting this uh, neat pg exam in 2021 jan then it is high time to begin revision it is high time so ideally speaking you should have already completed your course and began your revision but if you have not completed don't worry right it does not mean your preparation has fallen apart there is still time but now you need to begin revision right so make a timetable wherein you begin to uh, you know have a target right when you are going to finish the unfinished business your subjects but parallelly you should begin revision as well right so uh, i i think you should combine both revision as well as studying as of now all right coming to the next doubt uh Shatadru Chaudhary has asked us, sir can you give us some insight on the mcq pattern of upcoming inict see as far as i know um the upcoming inict would be kind of a mixture of uh, right aims and pgi or in fact the latest aims pattern uh, that you might have seen where there would be single best response questions plus multiple options can be correct so as far as i know a combination of both will come and but uh, most of the mcqs would be you know single best response type that is what i can guess here so it does not matter guy it does not matter you just uh, focus on uh, your notes revise them try practicing the uh, mcqs specifically those mcqs which have been asked in the last 1 to 2 years in aims uh, so you know whenever the pattern had changed so try try practicing those mcqs so you have a hang of how to uh, how to answer when multiple options are correct because that is a slightly a different ball game right All right guys uh, Kishore Avasti has asked sir I am a fourth year student and how to make proper long lasting notes are kaplan and fa notes uh, helpful for exam see kaplan notes will not be helpful for i exams at all because they are too consolidated and if you have seen the kaplan notes they are not of much use until and unless you combine them with the kaplan videos right and those uh, kaplan notes are uh, uh, too less uh, for our exams which are in more detail our exams are in more detail they ask you more detail so they will not be much helpful though nevertheless uh, you can do practice uh, usmle type questions that that is going to help you in your next exam uh, which are more clinically oriented right because you might have seen in usmle exams that even basic subjects like anatomy physio pharma patho the, the questions are not direct right they are more uh, they they will there will be a pinch of clinical aspect as well in, as in these questions so that that you can do but kaplan notes i, I guess they are not going to help you much and how to make proper long, long lasting notes uh, so so you are you're in fourth year now and um, you can begin right uh, to use any platform xyz whatever you are comfortable with and go through the video lectures and gradually start making notes now i would advise you nowadays it is better to make e notes right so by using a tablet or something and so that you can always edit them so try try using uh, the microsoft word to make your notes because uh, there is a, an option where you can increase or decrease your space and add something on a later stage when you find new information right so nowadays guys uh, the faculties in all these platforms are quite updated and the videos are great and the lectures they are going to ask uh, the lectures that you are going to go through Uh, they'll have all the detailed information but nevertheless if you if you'll find some deficit in some subject you can always go back to your standard textbooks and keep adding on to those right but you need to restrict yourself 
Madhulita Patnaik is asking, sir, uh, I, I have given the subject wise test of pharmacology and uh, most of the questions are from QBank. So I feel like, uh, so she's feeling like she's not testing much herself. Uh, Madhulita, so don't worry. Madhulita, these uh, subject wise, wise tests or grant tests, uh, they're less, they're less about judging yourself, right? They're more about practicing the MCQ. They are more, more about solving a given number of questions or MCQs in a given period of time. They are more about developing a habit as to how you go about a paper, right? How you go about a paper, how are you, how are you gonna approach a paper? So first you'll, sol you'll solve those questions which are 100% sure about them. How you'll go about the other questions, how you'll ru rule out the option. So it is more about those things. The last thing that I look at in a grant test or a subject wide test is how, how much I am getting how much what are the numbers i'm getting right if i'm getting less number then also it's nothing to worry about if i'm getting very high scores that also does not mean that i'm gonna be a topper in the neat exam it does not mean at all guys so here giving subject wise test and grant test is just a way uh, to consolidate your knowledge because you might have seen when uh, you study something right and uh, you do an mcq uh, by applying your knowledge that particular point which will apply that, that will remain for you forever for more a very long period of time so that is another benefit of doing mcqs so look at it uh, at from that point of view um all right so next doubt is asked by venkatesh uh, prabhu rajaram all right so uh, prabhu is asking sir my internship starts next jan and until this december i'm planning to study full time what subjects should i include in full time preparation what subjects are the best for studying little every day during internship all right guys prabhu what I'll tell you is there are 19 subjects, right? And there might be four to five subjects out of those which you are weakest in. Those subjects which you you know you never wanted that they existed in this world. And those subjects which you have palpitation once you look at the textbooks of these subjects, right? Or you even think about studying those subjects. So choose those four to five subjects. It can be medicine. It can be anything. It can be medicine, pharma, surgery, whatever it is, right? So in these full-time preparation when you're full-time try to master those weaker subjects do away with them so what happens is when you have those subjects left which you are stronger in then you can do part-time study during your internship and go for the final kill in the next exam now I, I i think if you go this way it would be much much more productive right and if you say that my 19 subjects are all perfect then i would advise uh, go for the most volatile subjects, pharma, micro, biochemistry. You should be thorough with these three subjects um, in full time, right? Because these are most volatile subjects and these are difficult to remember, right? So, and then you can go with, uh, if you want one more subject, I think you should go for medicine. Because medicine nowadays, um, a lot of questions will be asked from the clinical point of view. So medicine would be your, you know, anchor in the 19 subjects. All right, guys, coming to the last uh, doubt for today. Uh, is by Hari Chidambaram has asked, uh, Sir, I'm doing my first revision and not, not able to complete 60 to 75 percent. Uh, I'm able to complete 60 to 75 percent of my daily target. And um, do I need to improve it or just continue the same? Please give your opinion. See, uh, Hari, what happens is if you're, you're living 20 to 30 percent every day and you are taking it over and over and over and over, so at last, what would happen is your exam would be at your doorstep and you would not be able to complete at least 20 to 30 percent of your course entire course not revising so that would be detrimental so what you need to do is i i i guess you are in the beginning of your preparation so when you are in the beginning of your preparation for first few days or weeks like 10 to 15 days you might not reach your target so you need to sit back and analyze what is that is uh, not allowing you to finish your target is it uh, that you are setting yourself unrealistic goals or what is it so you need to get rid of that you need to analyze the situation and find a way out so that you can complete your revision on the day right or uh, on the day which you have thought of and this is the reason why precisely i say never count though the seven to eight days in the month of jan right 2021 don't count that those days should not exist for you those days you should use as a cushion so whenever you are not able to complete on time you know that there is some day i can borrow and if you are too perfect you complete your revision on the last bang on of december then on the new year first of jan for the first six seven days what you can do is again try to briefly revise so that that is the benefit you are gonna get if you keep those you know uh, those uh, last seven to eight days as buffer zone let it work as your buffer zone all right guys so that's all for today 
and if you have any doubts queries related to your preparation uh, you can always let me know in the comment box and uh, i'll always try to incorporate them in the upcoming farmcasts so take care bye bye this is dr ranjan with you